Black Widow, directed by Kate Shortland, is the long, 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 long awaited solo film of one of the most famous Avengers, finally getting a chance to explore her past and go back into the timeline, but we finally get to explore the origins of this famous character and even explore her tragic upbringing and to seek the characters that she seeks vengeance against for making her suffer during her youth. I finally got to see the film about three weeks ago, my friends online, after two viewings, and though yes, I'm about to be a month late in this review, finally, after an entire year, I get to see the film that was supposed to kickstart my summer and even celebrate my 18th birthday, my introduction into manhood after my graduation, my second introduction into manhood. So now, without further ado, here is what I thought about the first film, the phase four of the MCU. To think that it's been two Christmases since the first trailer of this film dropped. I just finished my first semester of my senior year, and throughout all of the beginning of 2020, we were just talking about how we were gonna watch every single movie over the summer, and how we were gonna celebrate our first summer as graduates, and the first big film we were going to watch for my 18th birthday was going to be this very movie. Then a few months later passed, then we all know what happened. But after a whole year of waiting, we finally get to see this film on the big screen and on Disney+, Plus, making it the first film in the Phase 4 of the MCU. No more TV shows or online limited series of just 9 episodes or 6 episode seasons. A full-length motion picture. An actual summer blockbuster like i thought i'd never experience again last summer blockbuster i got to see was literally kong versus godzilla and that was back in the late spring so now after a whole year of waiting i gotta say it my still initial reaction is still why now so i don't consider much of a spoiler anymore to discuss the plot of the most successful bo sorry second most successful box office film in history and to discuss the fact that one of the main characters in that film, Black Widow, dies and has been dead for two years in this franchise. And now all of a sudden Kevin Feige and Marvel Studio finds it the perfect time to explore the character's past. Now, that's not to say that the film is pointless or even a bad film. Matter of fact, for most of the runtime, it was a pretty fun experience, especially with the incredible action sequences and the fun and interesting characters that you see throughout the whole story, carrying the entire film. Instantly reminded me of the Captain America trilogy, directed by the Russo brothers. And to see Scarlett Johansson play Black Widow once more is always such a joy. Not to mention that the other characters also had their show-stealing moments, such as Black Widow's lost sister, played by Yolanda Lyons, bringing a buddy film style throughout the story. Or Officer Hopper himself, David Arbor, playing their lost father, aka Captain Soviet, uh, the Soviet version of Captain America, which is still the strangest title ever described. But that's pretty much expected at this point when it comes to these films. That's fun characters and exciting action sequences is pretty much the base for every one of the MCU films. It's practically their bread and butter. But despite all that, there's still overwhelming problems that overwhelm this film. And it's really two things, the writing and the editing, specifically on the plot and the intro. From the first 15 minutes, I could already tell we were in for a bumpy ride. After an admittedly fascinating and interesting look into Natasha's past with her cover of family, who all seem to speak in American accents even when they're at home, is <laughs> still an interesting look into it. All of a sudden, we cut into a five minute intro sequence where they explore her upbringing in the Red Room, but not really because it's cut and stylized, so you can barely see exactly what's going on while having background music to the cover of Nirvana's Nevermind. It made me wonder if I was in an early 2000s music video for most of it. And then we get into the writing part of it, which usually is not something I really complain about in these films. It's probably the easiest part to let go and never criticize, as a matter of fact, praise. But for the first time, you could really tell that either A, they rushed it, or B, they rushed it. It's whether a, that they did this because of the pandemic, or B, they did this anyway because they really had no idea what they were doing with this. They were really all over the place. Because for the number one, the most overwhelming part of all of this film is that it still just feels so unnecessary and so out of place in its release. It's so strange to still see this film, as I mentioned earlier, come out at this time when it clearly was meant to be set up for Infinity War. 
even at the after credits of this film, they're setting up Infinity War. It just makes it so obvious that they had so many different plans for this film, or at least they were clearly setting it up for that. But then all of a sudden, they release it two years later after the finale of that entire quadrilogy, that entire series of films. It, it just felt so confusing. But even aside from that, the writing itself, the dialogue for these characters, which is usually always done so well with all these characters usually being fun, and now usually interesting, exploring them and making a cracking a good joke where you can get a good laugh out of it. Some of these jokes really don't land. There's a specific scene throughout the middle se uh, middle of the film in one of the sequences after they help a capt uh, Red Star escape from prison, where they just go into this very overplayed, overdone joke about female genitalia and vasectomies. It's it's one of the cringiest scenes I've ever possibly witnessed in an MCU film, and it just felt so out of nowhere, and it made me just constantly ask myself the question, why? What was the purpose of that? What was the joke for a franchise and a, and a team of writers and a production crew that's usually done so ungodly well when it came to their humor and their comedy and taking care of their characters? It's like these writers just gave up and just decided to make the strangest high school humor that I've ever seen in a film. And I just cannot be stressed enough how out of place this release for this film feels. That honestly, throughout the whole film, it's just in the back of my head how clearly the writers and the directors were clearly trying to use this to set up Infinity War and Endgame. And yet, they decided to wait. Which makes me reluctantly admit that this is the first film of Phase 4 where I feel disappointed. It's the first one to come out. But I can't help but feel that. However. As I mentioned and stated many times on this channel before, a disappointment doesn't mean a bad film. Films can be major letdowns and still bring a lot of entertainment. Rise of Skywalker is one of my favorite examples. And to see Black Widow or to see the MCU on the big screen again is always such a blast. And to finally explore Black Widow's past is something exciting. And to see some good old MCU action sequences on the big screen again. Now that's entertainment that can never I'm going to give Black Widow a 7.5 out of 10. Admittedly, seeing the return of the MCU on the big screen has made me a little more lenient on these films, and for most summer releases, to be honest. But that still just does not take away from the absolute fun I had genuinely watching this film. Despite the problems, despite the strange release, I just had too much fun and too much of a blast, and generally was invested for most of the story after the intro to see and explore this character's past that Despite its problems and despite its major flaws, it's still such a blast to see the MCU once again on the big screen, to see Black Widow's character again, to see Scarlett Johansson perform this character, and honestly, I just can't wait to add another film to my collection. I can't help. Guys, that was my review for Black Widow. What did you guys think of the film? Were you guys just as excited as I am to finally see Phase 4 on the big screen, to see the MCU back? You guys have no idea how long I've been waiting for this. It's insane to finally be able to see this film. But yes, admittedly, I am a month late to this. You know what? Technically, the last time I saw a, a film of the MCU on the big screen was literally two years ago when I went to go see Spider-Man Far From Home. And that also was technically a month late. So in the end, it all comes around. Guys, though, thank you so much for watching this video. I genuinely had a blast doing this. And honestly, as far as I know, there's at least one or two more movies that I believe that was supposed to come out last year that I'm going to be reviewing on this channel. But after that, this fall and this winter is nothing but new actual 2021 releases. I cannot wait. So yes, of course, new videos coming soon this fall and winter. That's going to be very busy and exciting schedules. I'm finally going to be in college in person. That also means expect finally new kinds of content with my old gang. Finally getting back together and make some new videos again. So expect some good old classic Ninja Nerd content with some new ones with a little twist. Thank you so much for watching again. And guys, take care of yourselves. Get vaccinated and have a lovely day. Get vaccinated. See you guys.